a kid growing up, I don't want to go into a long drawn out story with your show, but as a kid growing up, you know, seeing the, the yellow and red and running to the ring and always prevailing, it was just larger than life. I wanted to be that. I wanted to be the superhero. I didn't care about, um, you know, myself being a real monstrous guy or I just cared about, you know, being that superhero. And, and to this day, you know, some nine and a half, ten years later in the business, I still don't call myself a pro wrestler. Everybody asks me, and it's like a pro wrestler is defined as Batista, or Triple H, the size of those guys. I call myself a sports entertainer. You know, at whatever level that sounds to you guys like, I say that pitched everywhere, and it's coming from, you know, within my heart that I'm as real as it gets in indie wrestling. And I guess that's why there's so many people that hate me, and I hate them right back before they had a chance to hate me. And that's just the way it is with me, you know. There's no red tape. I mean, I am who I am. I speak what my mind tells me to speak, you know. And uh, I'm just a 100% bona fide sports entertainer. And, and Hogan would be uh, pretty much it. You know, I watched all the other guys, Andre the Giant, uh, Roddy Piper. But Hogan is the only one that influenced me. If not a Hawk Hogan, I wouldn't have been doing this for nine and a half, ten years. Well, okay, well, all right. Go ahead, dear. Mr. Eight by Ten. Um, you, you're coming off this, you know, the the 15 month, you know, recovery. You know, you said you, you know, inspired by Hulk Hogan and whatnot. What's left for you to do? What 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 is your goals when you're coming back after this long lay, layover? Um, do you do you aspire to 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 do ROH or any of those or TNA or any of those are you, you happy to work the indie circuit what what's left for you to do that's easy I think anybody that's in their right mind would say it you know it was a dream growing up watching the Hawkster come out in a WWF ring and um, you know it's going to take some time uh, God willing I would love to just one time it's never happened but I would love to one time step foot in a WWE ring. If it was one time, I would have lived my dream and could the very next day hang them up permanently forever. I want to perform in a WWE ring. That's that's why I want to do this because I felt that I I lost out. I just I, I think I was good enough character wise to have performed with anybody one loser draw one time in a WWE ring. Well, you, you you said you've wrestled, you know, I, I've seen you wrestle the honky tonk, you've had arm wrestling matches and stuff with Luke, Lex Luger and all these guys. Um, have you, you you've never uh, gotten the recommendation by a promoter or a rep or anybody for a dark match or anything when they've come into your area? Uh, Demolition Axe, Bill Eady from uh, Georgia actually had, uh, I performed one night with him and he had, there was a promoter that came from Kentucky and he had, managed to tell the promoter that uh, Mr. 8x10 is the real deal, you know, and uh, he's got something that uh, I think that your promotion, I, I can't remember the name of the promotion, dare say, uh, I'd lie if I told you I knew it, but uh, he had at that time told the promoter that I was one of the guys, at least from, you know, that area in the Ohio Valley that he thought character-wise, coming from what he had seen in the ring, that could have been looked at. I mean, that's been the only time. Never had a problem with the guys I worked you know, Honky, Brutus, Beefcake, Coco, Beware. I've worked so many, I've actually forgot names. And uh, I've never had an A1 problem with any of them. But uh, Bill Weedy, Demolition Axe, went out and uh, had, had made that comment. So when I had heard that, and this was just some four, three years ago, I had known right then and there at that time, and I felt in my heart that there's no way I couldn't perform in a ring with anybody at least one time in a WWE ring. You just you, you have to know that you got it. You know, dare say, you know, a contract or be a, you know, big-time player. But I do feel care from a character standpoint, I still today in my heart feel that I could perform with anybody on the planet in a WWE ring character-wise. All right, guys, for those listeners out there that are just joining us, we are talking to Mr. 8x10, independent wrestling star, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to give us a call. That number is 646-929-2442. Again, that's 646-929-2442 to talk to Mr. 8x10. Now, Mr. 8x10, you mentioned, you know, if you were hanging them up tomorrow, your dream would be to get into a WWE ring. Who in the WWE would you like that match to be against? 
all, without a doubt, Triple H, the game. He, uh, he's got the, the total package. Um, yeah, I definitely think that uh, he could engineer a match good enough that he basically, and, and, you know, a lot of guys don't like to admit that they're carried through a match, but, you know, some of the biggest names today were carried through their matches at an earlier state in their career, that he could carry me on a physical level through a match. But on a character level, I think I could at least go through it and perform 100% with the game Triple H and would love to have wrestled Triple H or would still love to have an opportunity of any kind of match with the game. Okay. All right, all right. So um, we're going to come back, back full circle. You talked about it uh, at the beginning of the interview, your big return September 4th with Black Diamond Wrestling. Give us a little bit of uh, of information about what to expect and uh, and what the show will be like. Basically, what to expect. Uh, Black Diamond Wrestling and myself go way back. Uh, they were a rival promotion in our area who uh, basically on a month to month basis would compete with us. We would compete with them, and there was lo always a lot of internet you know heat, and uh, they always tried to outdo us. We tried to outdo them. Uh, once the XWF was purchased and bought from a, uh, a another individual, um, there was nowhere to go. And I had already at that time, you know, semi-retired uh, due to, you know, a couple injuries, the ACL I talked about, and, uh, you know, a personal life that I had dealt with at that time. And uh, right now there's uh, obviously, you know, some talk with me, Mr. 8x10 crossing over and, you know, going to perform at, for the first time ever with Black Diamond Wrestling. And I think as far as you know, what the people are going to expect down there in that area is a very much different Mr. 8x10, a much more leaner, uh, more healthier uh, Mr. 8x10, a guy that's going to come in there and shake things up. Uh, you know, with their promotion, you got a lot of their guys that, uh, you know, no pun intended, uh, I'm a street shooter here, but uh, they wear their shirts, you know, and uh, I think that anybody that calls himself a wrestler shouldn't wear a shirt to the ring, you know, so you better beware because... You know, when I come out, I'm going to come out and I'm going to flex. I'm going to show, you know, what kind of man I am as far as a wrestler. And uh, I just think that uh, some of their guys there need to hit a gym, go on a diet if they want to call themselves wrestlers. So I think it's going to be a lot of animosity. I think there's going to be a lot of uh, talk. But um, I'm going to keep my best foot forward, uh, go in there, be professional, and do the job. But I want to do it right. I want the right situation with the right person that uh, it's going to complement the way I look in my style as well as complement his look and his style. So I think it's going to be really a uh, atmosphere where if you were in the area, you you would definitely, you know, earn the price of admission. Well, you, you talk about your style. What what exactly is your style for those who haven't YouTubed you and and uh, are probably doing it as we speak? What, what what's your style in the ring? Well, um. Uh, very uh, versatile. I'd say more of a technical, flamboyant, uh, a little bit of a mix there. No high flyer. Um, I don't do all the moon salts and things like that. I'm more of a mad guy. Uh, I'd say technical and just really flamboyant. I played off the uh, the Hogan, you know, uh, ability back in the day. He didn't have a whole lot, but he he did that entertainment thing, and you know, I, I think I'm you know, at a mid-level as far as ability at best, but it's that sports entertainment part that comes out, the, the theatrics, the acting, you know, and uh, if I had to sum up who I uh, would perform like, I'd have to say to myself, I don't carbon copy anybody. It's just technical, flamboyant, and uh, the theatrics all mixed into one. All right. Now, Mr. 8 by 10 uh, we have a caller who has been patiently waiting uh on the line, would you be willing to take a question from a caller? Sure, absolutely. Yes. All right, all right. And I think it's a caller who was uh, trying to get on a little bit earlier. We appreciate your patience, caller from the eight five zero. You're on the line with Hit the Ropes Radio and Mr. Eight by Ten. Nice guys. What? Um. Yep. Okay. okay. <laughs> hey, hey, who are we speaking with? Chris. Chris. Yeah. All right, Chris, you're on, you're on the line here with the guys that Hit the Ropes Radio, and our guest is Mr. 8x10. Do you have a question? Uh, let's see. How many people have you defeated? Oh, boy, 2,000 matches. I'd probably say about maybe 700. Cool. 